thanks everybody. Um, yeah, so today we're going to talk uh, high performance Django, uh, basically taking your site from run server on your laptop to being able to get uh, uh, on the front page of Reddit. So my name is Peter Baumgartner. Like you said, I'm the founder at Lincoln Loop. Uh, we are a Django web agency, so uh, we build Django sites. Um, we help people with Django problems, and uh, we help uh, people learn how to scale uh, and uh, build new sites that uh, are built for large, high-scale traffic. Uh, so we've been around since 2007, and uh, in those seven years, we have learned uh, a lot about Django and how to make it uh, run fast and uh, handle lots of traffic. Uh, we've learned a lot of those lessons the hard way, so we actually um, recently wrote a book uh, by the same name, High Performance Django, uh, that kind of bundles up all those lessons we've learned and uh, packages them uh, in a nice little ebook now and probably uh, a print edition later. Actually, uh, uh, I have a couple here. Um, maybe we can give some out to people asking questions uh, at the end. So if you're a reader of Hacker News or uh, any, any other uh, web publications, you may have seen this before. You know, Django doesn't scale. Uh, how many people here uh, believe that? Does Django doesn't scale? OK. <clears throat> I'm going to be a little controversial and say that's true. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, Django does not scale. Uh, you may say, what about Instagram and Pinterest and Discuss? All these people are using J Django and they're you know, at, at massive, uh, massive numbers of users and traffic. How are they doing it? Well, I'd say they're not actually using Django uh, as much as uh, supporting cast of players. So um, you know, it's their database, uh, Postgres or MySQL. It's uh, Memcache and Redis. Uh, doing load balancing with Nginx, uh, maybe doing caching with Varnish. Uh, none of these are Django, uh, but they're really what makes uh, a Django site scale. Uh, you could use them just as easily with PHP. So all those servers, uh, <laughs> how do they work? Um, how do you plug them all together? That's, that's going to be the, uh, the focus of the talk today. Um, uh, we're going to do a lab demo. Uh, I um, am basically going to take a site from running and run server, and we're going to blast it with a lot of traffic, see how it performs, and then scale up. I'm, I'm not going to talk at all about uh, how to optimize your code today. I'm not going to talk at all about tuning your databases uh, or how to do caching. We're basically going to work uh, higher in the stack than that. So we'll be talking about how you serve your Django application, how you do load balancing, uh, and things like that. Um, I can't do this on my laptop because I, I literally need like multiple servers. Um, so uh, if any of you are doing like uh, massive BitTorrent downloads now or like watching cat videos or something, um, I'd appreciate it if you shut it off because it's going to be a really lame talk if uh, I can't get out to the internet. So um, like I said, we're going to be throwing a lot of traffic at these servers. Uh, it, it may look like uh, we're benchmarking Django, but um, really what we're going to be doing would be a terrible benchmark. Um, I'm going to set up a fake Django application. It's going to have fake data in it. Um, I'm going to use EC2's network. Who knows what's going on there? Um, and I'm going to use Docker containers inside virtual machines on shared infrastructure. Again, you know, uh, neighbors could be doing anything. Uh, so don't take the exact numbers. Uh, we're going to we're going to um, see here to heart, but more um, of the difference, the the difference between uh, each different uh, setup we're going to have. Okay, so uh, first up, we'll take a look at Django. So let's see here. Uh, uh, this is a um, EC2 instance I have set up. It's got a Django application on it. The it's a M3 extra large. So that is uh, has four cores in it and about 15 gigs of RAM. So uh, a decent sized box. It's not massive, but um, you know, for, for what we're doing, uh, it'll work well. I also have a RDS Postgres database server. Uh, it's a T2 medium. Um, I think that is two CPUs and four gigs of RAM, probably a lot less than what you would use on a big production site, but uh, for our purposes, it'll work well. So. Uh, 
I'm going to use a, a tool called FIG. Um, FIG, let's see, is a way to um, kind of manage uh, Docker containers. So what we're going to do here is we're going to spin up a memcache D instance uh, that is going to handle uh, cache sessions. And then we're going to spin up our web server running run server. Uh, so that looks like this fig, and we'll call our fig file and spin it up. So that creates our web container and our memcache D container, and we're up and running. So I can show you what the site looks like right now. This is another box running in EC2. Uh, and it's going to be what we're throw, going to throw all the traffic at it. So um, this is just a, a app. Uh, I, I threw in a bunch of fake data. Uh, it's uh, user profiles, and um, the users have a couple foreign keys to a company and uh, their job title, and they have uh, a profile. That profile has a decent sized text blob in it and uh, some links to the people they share a birthday with. So um, it's not a totally trivial Hello World app, uh, but probably not as uh, crazy as, as what you'd be doing in production. Um, again, uh, just kind of a demo here. So uh, what you'll see in the real world is going to be a little different. Okay, so this is JMeter. So, um, you may be familiar with uh, like Apache Bench, uh, AB, or Siege. They're, they're good at uh, kind of blasting a uh, specific page with lots of traffic. Um, JMeter uh, is kind of like those on steroids. You can do uh, really complex uh, test plans and um, run them against your site. So what, what I'm gonna do, what, what's going to happen is we've got this request object, and it's going to go uh, loop through everything that's under it. So first it's going to hit the home page of the site as an anonymous user. Next, it's going to hit what I'm calling a hot profile page. So um, in, in a real world site, um, typically you'll see uh, there's, a, there's kind of a, uh, if you have a, a site with lots and lots of pages, there's usually a small subset of pages that really get hammered and then kind of a long tail after that that don't see quite as much traffic. So we're going to try to simulate that. So this is going to uh, pick a random profile page between 1 and 50 uh, and hit that. Um, next up, we're going to, uh, on 10% of our loops, we're going to log in. So uh, that login will, um, basically we'll hit the admin login page. That'll uh, give us a, the CSERF token. Um, we'll use that token and, and credentials to authenticate uh, against the server. And then we'll post to create a new profile. And then we'll hit the home page as an authenticated user. So kind of stimulating, a, you know, a a site that's got some logged in traffic and, and those, those users are doing something. Uh, another 10% are just going to hit a random profile page. So the database has about half a million profiles in it. Um, this is going to kind of simulate that long tail of, uh, of web traffic. So um, I'm all set up here to uh, hit my web server. Um, I'm going to do uh, 50 concurrent users and we're going to go through this loop 10 times and see what happens. Uh, so fire off my test here, and we can see our response times. So uh, what's happening is uh, we started off pretty good. We were below like 200 milliseconds, um, but really quickly we uh, are, are getting really bad response times. We're now up to a second and a half. Um, that, that's not really uh, a great um, response time uh, to serve requests out of Django. So basically what's happening is, is we're, we're overwhelming the server. Um, and if we go back and look, uh, this is HTOP. So we can see our, oh, you can't quite see, but um, those are run server instances in uh, Python there. And we're not really utilizing the whole server. Um, the, there's, you know, at most maybe, you know, 30, 40% of this, any of the CPUs are getting used. So, um, but, but requests are queuing up. Basically, this is uh, because run server is just a single process. Um, as of recently, it's multi-threaded, but uh, still um, we're only using uh, a single process, so not really great performance. Basically, the server is not fully utilized. Um, 
I can go back here and uh, I'm going to pull and, and we're going to keep track of uh, the, the data we're seeing here. So um, this is going to be, oh shoot. This font a little smaller so it fits on the screen. Uh, so that's run server. Oops. Uh, Fifty concurrent connections and our requests per second were twenty-eight point two. And our average response time was 1,353 uh, milliseconds. So about 1.3 seconds. That's uh, th that's not going to fly um, if you if you're on the home page or Reddit. It's a little too uh, too slow. So um, let's go back and uh, see what else we have. So normally you're you're not going to put a site into production and run serve with run server. That's uh, a bad idea. Um, usually you're going to use a production uh, Whiskey server. Uh, we're going to use UWSGI today. Uh, you might be familiar with GUnicorn, Apache Bond Whiskey. Um, any of those uh, really uh, are going to get you by. Um, this is just the one uh, we prefer. So I'm going to go back and kill off uh, our run server container. And while that's happening, I'll show you um, our UWSGI configuration. So uh, you can't quite see the edge of the screen there, but they, these are processes. Uh, so instead of running one process like run server, we're going to run six processes. And uh, uh, again, we have um, threading on, so uh, multi-thread, multi-threaded, uh, six processes. Uh, we should expect some better performance here. Um, the rest of this stuff is kind of boilerplate. You don't need to really uh, worry about. So uh, I'll show you as well. So this is how we are going to start off uh, our UWSGI process here. Fig. All right, UWSGI's up and running, and we'll uh, erase our previous test results. Um, UWSGI's gonna go a little faster, so we'll loop through over this 20 times here. And uh, start off our test. So you can see here, uh, performance is much better. We were pretty quickly over a second with run server. Um, here we're you know, under half a second on almost all our requests. Uh, you can see the authentication uh, takes a little longer. That's uh, the password hashing in action. Um, we actually want it to take a long time, so uh, that's good. And we can see we're serving a ton of requests. Let's see how our processor's doing. So uh, we're utilizing a lot more of the machine. Uh, there we go. Um, so it's, uh, you know, it's, it's definitely, uh, we may have just finished the test run there, but uh, as you can see, we, you know, we were uh, hitting 90% uh, CPU usage, and it does look like we finished. So let's see our results. So uh, we're going to go back here, UWSGI, again, 50 concurrent users, and our requests per second are up to 72.4. So. Uh, 150 percent better. That's that's a pretty good improvement. Our average response time is down to 279. So uh, much better performance. Exact same server. Uh, all we did was was swap out run server for basically a real whiskey server. Um, let's see what happens if we take that same server and instead of uh, throwing 50 concurrent connections at it, we throw 100 concurrent connections at it. Uh, and I think this is going to take a little longer, so for, uh, for short on time, I'm going to bump that down to 10 uh, loops through. We'll erase our old results and fire it up again. So we should see here, uh, we, we're pretty much uh, maxing out the server. Uh, 
it's under a lot of load and the, and the, the load average is just gonna keep creeping up here. And if we look at our response times, uh, we can see they're also jumping up. So last time we were hovering around you know, half a second, um, now we're hovering around a second. So in the real world, if you saw this on a server, uh, what you would be saying is um, you know, we're, we're maxing out this server. Uh, if, we, if we throw much more load at it, we're gonna start, uh, our requests are gonna start timing out. Uh, we're gonna start dropping requests. Uh, so um, this, this isn't gonna get us uh, what we need. So anybody know uh, w what the next step is? What's that? <laughs> uh, that might work. Anybody else? <laughs> caching, we could do caching. <laughs> there you go. So, so this server, you know, uh, we maxed it out. Um, we, we could, we could uh, get a, a slightly better optimized uh, Whiskey server that might buy us a little bit. Um, we probably would be a really good idea to look back at our application and see if it's, uh, you know, if there are places we can optimize it with caching and uh, improve the situation. But um, let's just, uh, you know, throw more money at the problem. Uh, you know, one server is not enough. Let's try two. So. Uh, that looks like this. Um, we're going to use Nginx as a load balancer and put uh, two servers behind it. Uh, instead of Nginx, you can use uh, something like HAProxy, uh, Amazon, ELB. Uh, there, there's lots of options here. So I'm going to go back to my web server, kill it off. I'm going to bring up another one. Uh, so this is uh, Web2. And web two, oh, there we go. Uh, so web two uh, looks just the same as the other box. They're identical. Um, this time we're going to bring up uh, uwsgi. You notice the other one said uwsgi HTTP. This is uh, uwsgi um, using the uwsgi protocol. So uh, it saves us a little bit of overhead, uh, basically converting HTTP uh, into what Nginx wants to use, and then back to HTTP, and then down to uWSGI. So um, we should get uh, a slight, slightly better performance by using uh, uWSGI's internal protocol, which Nginx can speak. So here's our load balancer. Um, I'll show you. This is our Nginx configuration. Uh, sorry. Um, Nothing exciting here. Uh, these are some settings that are known to boost the performance a little bit, kind of just boilerplate. Uh, here's our server that we've defined. We're going to pass back to a uWSGI cluster that will define when the container spins up, and uh, this um, include uWSGI params does everything we want it to do. So that looks like fig nginx. Okay, so there's our, our uWSGI cluster we defined. And let's see if our, looks like our web server is running. Okay, so we're gonna go back to our test plan here. Uh, we're gonna loop over it 20 times and instead of pointing to our web server, we're gonna point to our load balancer, which is called LB. I haven't put in our, uh, our other uWSGI here. So that we did run it with 100, and we got uh, a little better throughput there, 101 requests per second. But our average uh, response time jumped up to 750 milliseconds. So uh, yeah, we, we kind of decided that we had overloaded the uh, server there. So let's kind of forget about that one. That's, not good performance um, uh, overall. So I'm gonna erase this, start up against our load balancer, and we can see we're already doing uh, pretty close to, to double the requests here. Let's see how our response time is. Um, our response time's way back down. So 
um, kind of what we'd expect. Uh, you know, we, we served a certain amount of requests with one server. We doubled the servers, and uh, we're getting close to double the requests. Uh, at the same time, we're probably throwing twice as much traffic uh, at our database. So uh, you want to make sure that your database can withstand uh, all this extra stuff. Um, Yeah, or I think there's some kind of funky stuff going on with the network here with these uh, those, those gaps, but uh, hopefully we still get a decent result out of this. So uh, that was 100, let's see. So we have Nginx, 100 concurrent users, and we did 403 average response time, and... 137.4. So we pre came pretty close to, to doubling uh, our, our first option here. Um, the response time, that's higher than it should be. Uh, I think um, we kind of had some anomalies. If we ran the test again, I think we would see it's, it would be really close to that uh, initial um, UWSGI instance. Uh, maybe a little bit of overhead, but um, that, Nginx uh, is pretty efficient in proxying. So uh, that's, that's Nginx, 100 concurrent uh, users. What if we have 200 concurrent users? Let's see what happens then. So I'm going to erase these results, fire it back up, and let's see. Our response times are starting to go up. Let's see what our servers look like. So uh, this is web one. It's pretty maxed out there. Uh, this is web two. It's probably also going to be pretty maxed out. Yeah. And let's take a look at what our load balancer is doing. It's nothing. Uh, <laughs> so. Um, Load balancers are super efficient. Um, really, all you need to give Nginx is a, a big, fat network pipe, uh, and it can handle lots and lots of traffic on a, on a small machine. So let's see how we're doing overall. Kind of like when we bumped up UWSGI uh, uh, to um, you know, more than it could handle, uh, we're seeing about the same thing now. I'm, I'm guessing our average response time is probably going to get close to, to a second here. And uh, request per second, we did better, 166.8. So 166.8. So a few more requests per second at 200. And, but our response time was 805 milliseconds. Um, that means uh, basically we saw with, with very little load, um, we should expect response times around 200. So if we're at 800, um, that means we're, we're basically overloading our server, processes are waiting. So uh, let's, let's strike this one out as well. So next up, um, we could keep adding app servers, right? Uh, so if two didn't work, then we could add three. And if we can't handle it with three, we can do four. Um, but maybe we can get a little smarter here. Uh, if you keep adding app servers, you're basically pushing the problem uh, down your stack, and um, having load issues on your database is, uh, is not fun. Um, you, you, know, you can throw hardware at that for a certain amount of time, but uh, once you run out of hardware options, um, that problem gets a lot trickier. So maybe we can get smarter. Uh, whoops. And... Uh, this is going to be the last one that we're going to benchmark. So uh, instead of using Nginx as a load balancer, we're going to use Varnish. Um, Varnish uh, does the load balancing just like Nginx, uh, but uh, it can also do caching. So uh, it, the, when those requests come back from Varnish or come back from our back end through the load balancer, Varnish can grab a copy of it and, and serve that uh, to other users. So... With Varnish, I'm going to bump up the number of times we're going to loop through this here and erase the previous results. 
and fire it up. So um, pretty quickly, we should see the request per second jumping well above what we were at before. Uh, and, and let's take a look at our response times. Um, uh, our response times are actually a little, oh, okay. I didn't switch to, uh, to varnish here, so that explains why we're seeing the same thing. <clears throat> uh, so I'm gonna stop their web servers. I'm gonna stop uh, Nginx. Um, varnish uh, does not speak U the UWSGI protocol like Nginx does, so uh, I'm gonna start those up uh, again um, in the HTTP, uh, with the HTTP protocol. So there's our first web server. Here's our second web server. And um, Varnish is, is really amazing, uh, and I don't think it gets enough love in the Django community. Uh, I don't hear a lot of people um, talking about using it, so let's, um, let's take a look at, at the Varnish config and, and kind of walk through that really quick so you can see what's happening. Um, just like Nginx, we're going to uh, define our backends uh, when our containers spin up and uh, include that file. Um, Varnish is, uses a configuration language called VCL. It sort of maybe looks like what you would use to configure Nginx, but it's a lot different. So uh, you define these functions. Um, VCL receive is what happens when a new request comes in. So uh, it sees a new request, and what we tell it is if that request is to the admin URL or if uh, the request has a cookie called session ID, um, we want to bypass the cache. We want that person to always go through to the back end and get fresh content. They're authenticated or they're trying to access the admin and log in or something like that. Um, if they're not uh, in one of those, uh, we want to unset the cookies. So um, Varnish will look at a request and uh, basically um, determine whether or not it's unique. One of the ways it does that is by looking at the URL. Another way is by um, checking the cookies. So your Google Analytics package is going to set cookies uh, for a user, and you may have other reasons that there's cookies set for anonymous users. Um, the back end doesn't care about those, so we, we wipe all those out. Uh, next up is the VCL hit method. The VCL hit method, um, that's what happens when it finds something in the cache. So first, uh, what we do is we check the TTL, uh, the time to live. If it's um, still basically uh, still valid, uh, we're going to deliver that right from cache. Uh, what this next part does is, uh, let's see here, here we go. Uh, this next part, um, we can also define a grace period on our cache. So there's, there's basically two timeout values. One, uh, one we, if we're in the first timeout, we just deliver it. If we have passed the first timeout but are still within the second grace period, what we're going to do is serve that stale content to the user and uh, fetch new content from the back end in the background. So the user doesn't have to wait for uh, Django to return the response, but any future users are going to get uh, a new copy of that data or that page. So that's really nice. Um, uh, it, it can prevent, uh, if you have a really hot page, like you're on the front page of Reddit, and, and you have one page that's just getting hammered and hammered and hammered, and then your cache expires, what's going to happen is you're going to have 100 users all flood through to your back end and require, request that same page uh, before um, the, the cache refreshes. refreshes. So that's, a, I might call it a cache stampede or dog piling. Uh, so, so this is basically protection against that. Um, and then the, the, the last um, method here is where we actually said uh, the VCL back end response, um, we're gonna set the uh, grace period and the time to live on the requests that are coming back out. Uh, Varnish also respects cache headers, so this is something you can define in Django, uh, but um, for, for our purposes, we're just going to keep it simple, and uh, we're setting a five-second time to live and a five-minute grace period um, in production, uh, depending on the you know, type of site you have, you, you maybe could run those uh, much higher, um, but when you're on... Uh, you know, when you're on Reddit, um, even having those set really low, uh, five seconds might be enough um, for you to, to withstand that. Basically, that means 
Uh, if, you have, if you've got 100 users, 100 concurrent users uh, sustainably hitting your site, um, only one request every five seconds is going back to your back end. So that can be a huge load off of uh, your servers. So, all right, now let's uh, spin up Varnish. Oops, up. Uh, I did switch those over, okay. So let's try this again. Erase our previous results. That's what I'm expecting. Okay, so if you can see there, uh, our throughput skyrocketed. We're uh, 550 requests per second. Uh, and if you look at our average response time, it, it's uh, 178 milliseconds. So, um, and, and, and this is the, this is the, the really interesting um, one to me is uh, if you look at the average and median response times on our hot pages, uh, two milliseconds. So you're, you're never ever will get Django running this fast. Um, varnish uh, is, is very, you know, it's a cache. Uh, so um, it, it does what you'd expect. Uh, no matter how much optimization you do in your code, your database, anything, it's never going to do this. So you can have the full page caching on. So um, this is where Varnish really shines. So uh, that test is already done. Let's add that to our list here. So we're running Varnish, uh, 200 concurrent requests, and we did 456 requests per second. Oops. And... Our average response time was 203. So uh, compared to Nginx running on the exact same servers, uh, we, we more than doubled uh, our, the requests per second we're handling, and we cut our response time in half. Uh, all the exact same hardware, all we did was change, uh, change Nginx with Varnish. So that's a huge win. Um, let's see what uh, Varnish can do if we were to throw... 400 concurrent users at it. So this is a lot of traffic. This is 400 people simultaneously uh, hitting your site. Um, most sites will never see this much traffic. Uh, so we're going to run that again. And then uh, while that's running, let's take a look at what our servers are doing. So this is web 2. This is web 1. Uh, load is a little bit lower you'll see than, than what it has been in the past. You know, before when we were overloading the servers, we were, you know, really just uh, totally spiked. Um, it, it's, they're getting used pretty heavily, but uh, still not a ton. It looks like we might have, have we finished already? Yep, uh, so we're already done. Uh, that's, uh, we'll add that to our list here, varnish. Uh, that was 400. Oh, wait. Uh, I think I we might have had a, uh, another one of these kind of blips in the network. Yeah. That's not normal. That doesn't uh, happen. This is why this is a terrible benchmark. Um, usually that would be smooth. So uh, just pretend you don't see that giant spike there. <laughs> uh, anyhow, um, oh, and, and then while that's running, we can also look at uh, Varnish. Just like Nginx, it's, it's not even breaking a sweat. Um, you put a bunch of RAM in your varnish machine, and you make sure it's got lots of network uh, capability, and uh, it'll handle a ton of traffic. So looks like it's wrapping up now. Uh, so that was 400. These results aren't great, but we'll add them in. I've run this, like, testing it a million times, uh, so just take my word on it that uh, normally it's about the same as far as the uh, uh, response time and slightly better request per second. So 360, wait a minute, 476. I got these backwards here. And 364 point eight. So uh, while we have this up, let's, um, let's look at some other kind of cool things about Varnish. Uh, I've got a, a few minutes left here. So I'm going to 
go in and uh, instead of looping over this 30 times, we're going to loop over it 100 times uh, to give me some time to show you what's happening on the servers. So I'm going to start off our test here and I'm going to go back to our load balancer. And this will let me go into our Varnish server, uh, our Varnish container that's running. So one kind of cool thing uh, Varnish comes with is this Varnish, his, varnish histogram. Uh, this is showing us the, in real time the requests that are hitting the server. The dashes or the pipes, the vertical lines, are ones that are hitting the cache. Uh, you see that 1E-5, e that's one millisecond. Uh, and then the, the hash marks are the ones that are uh, cache misses and hitting our back end. So um, those are getting re returned around, you know, in the neighborhood of a second. Uh, it also has varnish uh, top. Uh, no, that's not what I want. Varnish stat. Uh, so here you can see hit miss ratios. Uh, number of uh, connections and all that. So um, a big performance win is basically just uh, letting Varnish serve more of your cache, and you can track that. Uh, you know, it, it does a really good job of showing you um, what your uh, hit and miss ratios are. Uh, and, and this is a really awesome thing. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to kill Web 2 there, and I'm going to kill Web 1, and let's see what's happening. So take a look at this. Uh, our hot pages are not errors. Um, we're still serving content uh, on all those pages. So uh, you've totally screwed up. You've deployed a, a massive breaking change to your live servers in the middle of you know being on the front page of Reddit, and, and Varnish is still chugging along serving your content. And 10% of your users are getting errors. Yeah, that's bad, but uh, you know your important content is still up and running. So you, you know you can see the the error ratio shooting back up on all these, but uh, Varnish is still serving our homepage and those 50 profile pages in two milliseconds. So, uh, you know, we can spin back up our, our web servers and Varnish is going to reconnect to them and, uh, you know, basically fix all that stuff. So use Varnish. It's really great. <laughs> that's, that's the uh, <clears throat> lesson of this talk. So we did about 450 requests per second with Varnish. Uh, if you were to uh, you know, do that sustain for a day, that's 40 million requests in a day. Uh, you know, th there's people that do a lot more than that uh, in a day, but they do it a lot, on a lot more than three servers. And uh, you know, if you were to be on the front page of Reddit or something like that, uh, that'll get you by just fine. Uh, you could probably do it on a lot less. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if you could do it on one server running uh, Varnish and, and your application. So um, pretty good results from, from where we started uh, with, uh, hang on. So we started, there we go, uh, with run server at 28 requests per second. So um, like I said, Django doesn't scale. Don't use run server in production. Varnish scales, uh, use Varnish. And uh, yeah, that's all I have. So uh, like I said, we wrote a book. Uh, it's called High Performance Django. Um, you can check it out at highperformancedjango.com. I also have a few copies here that are loaded on these nifty little USB keys. Um, uh, if anybody wants to ask questions, I'm, uh, you can win a copy. <laughs> Thank you.